A Montana woman says she's at risk of losing her home, all because of a verbal agreement she made with a renter who wanted to eventually buy the home. But there was a glitch in the plan. The whole deal happened through a casual conversation and some text messages. MTN chief investigative reporter Andrea Lutz is taking an in-depth look at what you need to know the next time you make a verbal agreement in Montana. You might think verbal contracts rarely hold up in court, but in this case, a Montana judge is so far honoring an agreement to purchase a home, all of it hinging on a series of text messages. Well, this sort of an agreement happens all the time in our state. You may have even done something similar yourself, but the trouble is sometimes it doesn't go quite as planned. This is 27 Beartooth Way. Multiple holes in the walls. He ripped out all of the flooring. There was no insulation around any of the windows or the doors. Cheyenne Craft says she rented her home out to a friend, taking over the mortgage payments. It's, there's holes everywhere. But when their deal them. fell through, she says he trashed he it. He put dead animals in my crawl space to rot and then jammed the door shut so I wasn't able to open them. Although her name is on the deed, she doesn't necessarily have control over the home. They have taken away my future, and it's a very disheartening feeling to feel like you have no rights to your own home that you pay for and is in your name and you bought. Kraft is currently in a contract dispute that's playing out in Carbon County Court with her former renter, an ex-friend who agreed to eventually purchase the home. But she says, his funding never came through. Because he seems to think that he is entitled to part of my home, and the judge seems to think the same. He is Christopher Neff, the owner of Big Belt Builders, who declined multiple requests from MTN Investigates for an interview. But he did tell me on the phone he means no ill intent. Kraft says when Neff eventually stopped making mortgage payments, she says she had no choice but to try and evict him. That's when he filed suit against her for breaking their verbal contract. I felt very helpless at that point. Neff alleges time was not of the essence in the deal and the terms of the contract were memorialized by text messages and that both parties were obligated to cooperate fully. A lot of times it's relationships gone bad. Verbal contracts are a fickle thing, according to Bozeman attorney Andy Willett, who specializes in real estate law. He says there are some rules outlined by state law known as the statute of frauds, a concept that requires certain kinds of contracts to be in writing in order to be binding. It includes real estate sales and goods over $500. Certainly tax email can rise to that level. Uh, we have a law in Montana that allows for that. So Willett says it's best to always get it in writing. Everybody knows what, what it is. It's in the four corners of the document, as they say, in plain meaning, and it's not up for interpretation later. As the parties negotiate in court, Kraft is now living back in her home trying to fix the damage. Damage that's outlined in a home inspection report. It has numerous safety concerns with electrical wiring and a disconnected pipe that was allowing carbon monoxide to flow into the home. But perhaps the most alarming, meat and dead animals left to rot in that crawl space. Um, I think his thoughts were he was going to own this house and he was going to do some work to it. In court documents, Neff maintains he used his contracting company to put work into the home adding value to it. But Kraft feels duped by the whole ordeal. I pride myself on taking care of all of my business, my children, you know, being a single mom of the kids, I can't, it's hard for me to afford to keep doing this. She's now falling behind on mortgage payments and legal fees. She says she can't try and resell the home to someone else either. I was told that I would be in contempt of court if I were to sell it. I feel like I did everything the right way and there wasn't anything I could have done differently to get a different outcome. So Andy Willett, the attorney you heard from in my story, says plain and simple, these cases are hard to win or lose. As for Kraft, she also says she has felony criminal charges pending against Neff for allegedly stealing thousands of dollars worth of household items when he was living in the home. I'm told both parties recently went through mediation and a trial is set for early March. For MTN Investigates, I'm Andrea Lutz.